Hello everyone. Um, today we have a talk by Chen Song. Chen Song is a fourth year PhD student at uh, the Embedded Sensing and Computing Lab uh, at University of Buffalo. Um, and his PhD research focuses on emerging cyber physical systems such as smart manufacturing, mobile healthcare, and human biometrics. Specifically, he is interested in using machine learning and sensor fusion technologies to address system level challenges in security, efficiency, and reliability. Today, um, he's actually, this is uh, some comments on this talk is uh, this is a uh, ongoing work, and this is like a checkpointing talk, in fact, I would say, because the work is not complete. But he's going to talk about the system that he built to, um, to do motion estimation in VR, speci specifically using sensor fusion and machine learning. And with that, uh, please welcome Chen. Uh, thank you, everyone. Thanks for the introduction of my mentor, Shrive. Uh, next, I'm going to introduce the Intim project I did here, the sensor fusion for learning-based motion estimation in VR. So motion tracking in VR is important. Uh, during the time series, we always want to know where the controller is and where is the ha uh, headset is. The, the most important information we want to know is its uh, 3D orientation and its uh, spatial uh, position. By this kind of information, we can properly render the information in the VR space and provide better gaming experience, for example. The, uh, the isotropic accuracy is, is very important. The traditional, way, uh, the traditional way to track those devices is based on the computer vision, simply using the front camera uh, located at, at the headset. Uh, uh, we, we built the system based uh, upon for the mixed reality. Uh, the way we get the position tracking uh, data is, is to utilize the Steam VR SDK, which provides the, uh, which allows the developer to, um, to work with the uh, mixed reality VR in the Unity environment. So um, by exploring the Steam VR uh, SDK, we were able to find particular um, multiple classes ta that can give us the information we're interested. For example, the motion controller information class can give us the position and rotation information from the headset and the controller. And more importantly, um, there's another class called the XR.input tracking class will record the tracking status of the mixed reality. There's three in the, uh, index um, of, for those tracking status, high, approximate, and non. Uh, the, uh, the high index means that the mixed reality are, uh, at that moment, the mixed reality is correctly tracking the controller in the space. While the approximate, it means that the controller is going out of the field of view, uh, field of view of the camera, and the system can, doesn't know where it is. And now the, the index zero means that the system didn't find the device at all in the in the space. So the not or do you mean? Uh, yeah, like mm -hmm. they're not connect, either not connecting or that there is some tracking issues by this device by by the system. Now the the most uh, well the current mixed reality system was able is able to track the device uh, accurately in the high tracking status, high accuracy tracking status. But the, the, the state we want to emphasize is the approximate stage. When the controller going out of the field of view, there we can categorize it into two different cases. The first one is the controller is moving at the boundary uh, of, the, of the field of view, which means that uh, it will moving back very quickly and the system will be able to capture it again. And the next, uh, the other one is it completely moving out. And after two, two seconds, it will, it, will, it will go in back. So we redefine the tracking status by, uh, by counting the con consecutive states of the approximate. If it's one, then it's the approximate. If it's, there is four consecutive one, then we define it as out of field of view. So the performance of mixed reality Tracking is like this. For example, the, the red trajectory is the ground truth. Uh, we, we see that when it's moving out of the uh, when it's moving out of the field of view, the system cannot track it at all. And the mixed reality prediction of the controller position just gets stuck when at this point. And when it's moving back, 
uh, the system was uh, able to find it again, then there is a big jump here uh, without the continuous tracking. And the tracking, uh, because of this, the tracking accuracy for the uh, for different state is different. For the high, the, for in the in the high tracking stage, the mixed reality can have a tracking accuracy uh, error within four centimeters. In the approximate stage, it's around ten centimeters. But when it's going out of field of view in this particular stage, it, it can be as high. The arrow can go as high as fifty centimeters, which doesn't provide any useful information at all. So our proposed approach to um, to track the uh, controller's position when it's going out of field view can break into three steps. The first one is we utilize the lightweight sensor, ultrasound sensor. And the second one, we generate a learning-based model. And then uh, after, uh, and eventually, we will establish a sensor, a data fusion system to integrate all the information we have. So this is the, uh, this is the data flow we have. We have. We have the mixed reality sensor data here, provides us the uh, position stream, and we have the view sensor system and a learning-based module. Then we fuse the data and generate a better position tracking information. So uh, then I will introduce each module uh, one by one. The first is the lightweight, uh, the lightweight sensor for ultrasound ranging. The principle is to utilize the time, uh, time of flight uh, of the ultrasound to calculate the, di the distance. Now we have Assume we have the uh, headset and the controller. We have both the ultrasound located on each of the device. We at T1, uh, when during the T1, we transmit the ultrasound signal, and then T2, we receive it. Then we can calculate the distance based on the difference between T1 and T2. Uh, one thing important to note here is the time synchronization between these two devices will be very important. Uh, what are the units for the temperature here? Oh, the, the, the temperature is uh, Celsius degree. This is the entire for the, for the V sound. This is the unit. Uh, this is the for the velocity. Yeah, yeah. The, the, this is the architecture of the ultrasound sensing system we developed. We have a wireless synchronization layer, and we have an ultrasound ranging layer. Then we, we calculated the real-time distance in this layer and transmit all the data through the UDP um, via this data transmission layer. Oops. This is the uh, system diagram we, we built. We have, uh, we have uh, the synchronization uh, pro processes. Um, we, we have one master as the uh, for the synchronization uh, beacon generator, and we have on the left controller and right controller, we have correspondingly the slave processor to, uh, to receive the synchronization beacon. And, and we have the, for the transmitter, we, uh, we have one on the headset and two located on the controller also. Then, uh, then we use the synchronization processor to generate the operating commands uh, for those ultrasound transmitter to sending the uh, ultrasound periodically. Are these blue and orange, do they mean different channels? Uh, yeah, they're in different channels. And once the receiver receives the ultrasound data from this transmitter, it will calculate the distance and uh, uh, send out those real-time distance through the Wi-Fi uh, channel to the PC side. Now, there's one more slave here, a synchronization slave here on the PC side. We read the data. Uh, through the serial port on the PC and uh, use this particular processor to link the PC clock with the cycle time. Th this is the way how we can matching the uh, connect the board time with the uh, uh, ground PC clock. Can you tell you what is the difference between the sync slave one and the receiver one? Uh, the, 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 uh, the, the synchronization a uh, processor does one job is to, this is uh, periodically sending out the synchronization beacon, and these three will receive the beacon. Okay. And once they receive it, they will know what to do based on yeah, our design so mechanism. The slave is just used to do time synchronization on Wi-Fi. Okay. 
Yeah, because on this receiver, we, the, we use the Wi-Fi module to send out the UDP, so we don't want any interference. That's why we put it into two processors. And this is a list of uh, hardware information we use uh, in the system design. And we use the a oscilloscope, a four-channel os oscilloscope to do the hardware debug. This is uh, one of the photo when we're doing the experiment. We have a transmitter and we have a receiver. Then uh, because of the physical, there are some physical properties in the, in the ultrasound sensor itself. We designed a mechanism to, uh, to properly avoid the self-generated, um, randomly self-generated ultrasound noise and uh, create a clean window for the data collection, uh, data detection. And this time difference here should be uh, matched with the physical distance here. That's how we uh, capture the time differences and calculate the, the real physical distance. So eventually, we integrate the entire system upon the mixed reality devices. We put four sensors on the headset and uh, one receiving sensor on the controller. So, so in this way, the, the, um, the receiver on the the ultrasound receiver on the, on, the, on the controller will know how far it is away from the headset. So technically, you just added a small CPU with its own Wi-Fi and a microphone connected mm -hmm. to do the distance estimation in the controller. Uh, yeah. And you added one small CPU with all of those receivers in parallel to do the basically the pinging and to coordinate the synchronization. Yeah. Okay. And we take a look at the synchronization performance because it's very, very important. One millisecond difference can uh, generate the error of 30 centimeters uh, because the ultrasound travels really fast. So can I ask one question? Uh, uh, you had one receiver and four transmitters? Oh, yeah, yeah. The, tr uh, the four transmitters is just used to cover the entire uh, space. It will generate the ultrasound sequentially. But why? why? Oh, I see. So they all ping at the same time. Uh huh. Okay. Just, just the, the 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 radiation pattern of those transmitters is very narrow because it's a diaphragm with the size of the wavelength. Okay. And because we have uh, three synchronization slaves here, each of them has uh, has different uh, arriving delay. So we use a statistic method to uh, collect uh, a large chunk of data and calculate it, the standard deviation for each of them. And we utilize the, the this delay information and compensate it um, when we're collect, uh, calculating the distance. Just, uh, just compensate that amount of uh, arriving uh, difference in time. So what is the difference between the three? The difference is uh, the, the standard deviation will slightly increase because we, we, we stack three uh, synchronization, uh, synchronization uh, so processor. One in synchronization the... unit, and that is when two of them are transmitting in the middle one, three of them are trying to synchronize on the same channel. So that is interference when you have more than one guy trying to synchronize. <clears throat> can, can I ask one more question about the four transmitters? So now you're only extracting one distance estimate, right? Uh, yeah. Have you considered? I know that with the, their narrow beams and their diffraction and all that, but have you considered pinging them in sequence and getting multiple distance of estimates? Course we have, of course we have, I think, but the problem is limited uh, view, field of view of the, I mean, the transmission angle of the ultrasonic. The uni so you, you get nothing when you, like from the ones that are not? No. Okay. And so if there is an error, I, mm -hmm. you said if, if there is a delay of one millisecond, mm -hmm. that could cause some 30 centimeter. Uh, yeah, tracking error. Yeah. So the tracking error. Tracking. And that would be consistent. So consti consistently, you would be uh, off by 30 centimeters, or that could be in any direction. Um, the, the, um, the receiving delay has no relation to uh, the, the the corresponding uh, position it just but it has a it has a 
variance in the standard deviation. Sometimes it arrives early, sometimes it arri arrives late. That's why we, we use this statistic method to calculate the standard deviation so to compensate. Half a millisecond is 15 centimeters. One millisecond is 30, so 34 yeah. centimeters. You have this added as an error with this type of synchronization. Yeah. Uh, so that is standard deviation. So but that's the standard deviation. Be zero also. Meaning the, the delay could be zero also. The standard deviation is up to 55. Millis uh, okay, and you do this 10 times per second? Yeah, I do it multiple times, yeah. Okay, good. And this is the result we, uh, of the ultrasound tracking accuracy. We uh, evaluate its performance uh, with regard to the distance and angle. And uh, the average distance uh, Average distance arrow is around uh, nine centimeters, and the standard deviation is around ten. So that, this includes the clock synchronization yeah, and the yeah, measurement yeah, yeah. of the ultrasound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the entire like, sensing system. The result of the entire sensing system. Um, now the second, uh, the second module is uh, the learning-based model for. For, for tracking. Remember, we want to uh, estimate it, the position of the controller when it's moving out of field of view. Uh, because then there's, uh, when it's moving out, then what we have is only the accurate mixed reality prediction information when it's inside of the field of view. Then we need some mechanism to utilize this kind of information and generate, predict the uh, following uh, trajectory. So that's why we take a look into the Autoregressive uh, auto time series forecasting model because it is the, this this model can utilize the um, previous uh, information to generate the next one, and this uh, these uh, hyperparameters uh, a can be also learned by the machine learning. Particularly, we uh, we use the SL, S, uh, LSTM to track the time series data. The LS uh, LSTM includes uh, three modules. The forget gate is, is the one that it used to forget learning part of the pattern in the previous window and forget some of them. And in, in the input gate, it learns the, it learns the pattern in the, in the current learning window and to merge the current knowledge with the partial previous knowledge. Then it generates the output in the output gate. So just giving an, an example how the LSTM work is, uh, here uh, the, the train signal is the, uh, the sine wave. And by training the model, the, uh, the, LST, the corresponding LST model can accurately uh, learn the periodical movement and generate the trajectory in orange exactly fitting the original one. And applying to our mixed reality, uh, mixed reality data, uh, the generated we, we train the we train this model with the mixed reality trajectory when it's inside of field of view and we predict the data uh, we d predict the data on the testing set and as we can see here the blue one the predicted distance fits very well to the ground truth can you go side back so what the neural network predicts the coordinates or the coefficients in the regression Oh, Go on, one more. Coordinate, coordinates. Coordinates, okay. You don't try to predict the coefficient of okay. uh, then once we know the once we know the get the predicted distance, then uh, we we use a spherical projection method to update the estimated position, uh, to update the position information. Assuming we have this D estimate, uh, estimated, then we have the current pred uh, prediction, uh, current measurement of the position, then we can uh, correct this position by projecting it to a sphere that has the radiance of D estimate. Uh, D estimate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right now it's Assuming it's Where the other data come from? Hmm? Hmm. Uh, there is also uh, we will, we, will, we will cover that later. Okay. Yeah. So how do we get the uh, distance here? 
there is actually two sources. One is the ultrasound, uh, by the ultrasound ranging system, and the second one is the, either the LST, uh, LSTM prediction model or the mixed reality prediction when it's inside of field of view. And then we use a common, we can use a common filter to fuse the distance from these two sources and generate a uh, filter distance. Now here, um, here we use the common filter to, uh, to, learn the, to learn the common filter again and uh, also update the covariance matrix here in each step based on the uh, pre uh, previous trajectory information. So you track the movement of the controller visually mm -hmm. to the moment it gets out of sight and then use just a prediction using a common filter under the constraints of a distance you, which you measure constantly. Uh, we're actually using a, uh, when the moment when it's moving outside of you, uh, we use uh, the learning-based neural network, the LSTM, to predict its next, next position. But this prediction can be inaccurate, and we fuse this, uh, we fuse this information together with the ultrasound distance. So technically, you do more than just a common filtering to predict the trajectory. There is a implicitly learn the ability yeah, and, the, yeah, yeah. and the constraints of the movement of, a human, of the human body. Yeah. And on top of that, you add one more constraint, constraint, which is constantly measuring the distance to the controller. Yeah. Okay. And now uh, I'll go through the pipeline of the entire system, assuming the mixed reality prediction coming every 20 millisecond, and accordingly in each, uh, in each prediction, it will have uh, the corresponding tracking status. And uh, as we said, uh, as we as we said, um, we will use the we use a sliding window using the previous mix, mixed reality predicted trajectory to predict the next one, and we will keep that LSTM the neural net prediction in a separate array, which also uh, has the. So this MXR prediction is what they have in the mixed reality system, yeah. their yeah. own super duper MML uh, system. Yeah. Okay. So using that, we make a future prediction. Okay. And now we have another uh, data source, the ultrasound distance source that has the, a, a different um, uh, sampling frequency of 60 milliseconds. Uh, to, 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 uh, to fuse the, these, uh, the information on the left with the ultrasound distance, we first need to do the down sampling from, uh, 20 milli, uh, from 50 hertz to uh, every 60 milliseconds. Then, uh, then we have after we get the down sampled data, we we, we first do a selection. Uh, Sorry, can I, can I ask a oh, uh, is, why why are you down sampling the the ultrasound distance rather than up sampling? Oh, because Sorry, why uh, are you because based on our experiment observation, the ultrasound because the Wi-Fi synchronization delay, the ultrasound is kind of noisy compared to the. Uh, mixed reality data. That's why we don't want to upsample it to create more, to generate more, introduce more noise. So. But you do measure every 60 milliseconds. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, here, uh, here uh, we have two, uh, then we have two data sources here. Uh, we have uh, one down sample mixed reality prediction and the ultrasound distance at each uh, 60 milliseconds. Then, then in order to utilize this common filter, we, uh, we select these two um, data sources based on its tracking status. If it is two, then it means that the system is tracking the controller position accurately. Then we uh, trust more in this mixed reality prediction. Otherwise, when it goes to one, then it means that the controller is moving out of field of view and the mixed reality data is invalid then we will uh, utilize the ultrasound distance information. Th then this will be the first uh, distance source. And also, uh, during the tracking, we also keep a list of the LSTM, the neural net pr prediction. We will use that uh, as the second data source, and we fuse it to generate a fuse prediction at each timestamp. 
Uh, I mean, every 60 milliseconds. Jan, do you know if the headset has any sort of predictions mm -hmm. when you're moving close to being out of field of view? Uh, sorry? So when you're moving out of field of view, mm -hmm. does the headset have any kind of predictions? Uh, no, the headset only giving us its own position in the, in the 3D space. That's it. That's the only, only information we can get so far. And then uh, by knowing the fused uh, distance prediction, then we can do a spherical projection we talk, talked about. Uh, we just talked about and uh, project that uh, the position estimation from the neural network to the correct sphere. Sphere, uh, sphere. Yeah. So what is the input for the LSTM prediction? The input of the LSTM prediction is the, uh, is the previous uh, window of the tracking results. Of the MX, MXR tracking? Um, initially it is. Then it will just, using the iterative prediction, it will just, pre uh, for, uh, it, initially uh, we start with the tracking position uh, um, status high, and uh, we utilize, for example, 200. So it's a mixture. Yeah, yeah. Then we predict the next, and we put uh, we put this predicted LSTM prediction, put it back to the stack, and uh, generate the prediction at, uh, by itself. So we no longer rely on the mixed reality later. So this is the uh, overall. Overall, eventually we will have the tracking status, the mixed reality prediction, the neural network prediction, and the fused prediction. And we will select it accordingly. When, when, the, when the tracking status is high, then we use the mixed reality data. When the tracking uh, status is, is bad, then we check if the ultrasound, distance, uh, the, uh, ultrasound measurement has arrived. If it is not arrived, then we trust the neural network prediction. Or we will, just, uh, we will uh, rely on the fused prediction, which is calculated based on the ultrasound distance. Oops. And uh, and further, we can apply a uh, offset compensate to uh, if the if the tracking status is is low in this duration, um, then we can um, we can compen uh, we can further correct the neural network prediction by uh, adding the offset uh, between the. Uh, ultrasound prediction and the STM prediction during this window. So this is the entire uh, block diagram. Uh, for the data collection setup, we, okay. Oh, the, the prosper is means the down sample data. So MXR estimation is the same here and there. Oh, sub sample. Okay, yeah. go. Good. Yeah, yeah, sub sample. And in the data collection, we have uh, we uh, we use the A camera OptiTrack system to uh, do the motion capture, and uh, we also collect the uh, mixed reality uh, tracking data from the Unity um, for the in field and out field uh, field of view tracking. And also, we have the additional information of the ultrasound sensor and the S. LSTM model, uh, the prediction generated by the LSTM model. This is the, uh, uh, the framework of the collection. Uh, we collect the ultrasound data. Uh, we will do some pre-processing to smooth it. We talk there's some noises of the raw data. Then we apply the LSTM network upon it, do the data fusion, and we will have the estimated, estimated position. And we will compare the estimated position at each uh, uh, at each timestamp with the ground truth we collected by the OptiTrack system. Half a millimeter? Oh, yeah, the, really? the, yeah it's the sub-millimeter uh, accuracy of the track system. So, wow. the, so the, you also have to time synchronize the OptiTrack system with the, with the other things, right? Oh, yeah, the time synchronization is based on the work PC clock. clock. Yeah, the PC clock. Uh, this is the data we collected. Um, we Basically, we have two hours of uh, Random trajectory um, in the in the in the three D space, 
and okay, and uh, we just do, do some movement that uh, incorporating the in field of view tracking and out of field of view tracking. So uh, this is the result of the ultrasound distance tracking. Uh, as we can uh, see here, the, the blue line is the mixed reality tracking result, and the red line is the ground truth. The green one is the distance we, uh, we measure by the ultrasound. So, so when it's going out of field of view, the mixed reality just gets stuck where it is at this point. And only the ultrasound signal can go along with the, with the ground truth. Then we have some uh, arrow, uh, um, uh, we have some tracking, tracking arrow summarized here. Uh, for the, by, uh, for the in field of view, the mixed reality, uh, oops, has an, uh, has a lower arrow, uh, lower tracking arrow than the ultrasound. But uh, when it's going out of field of view, it just go high, and it, th this number is actually depends on the movement of your of your hand. What, what, the two, uh, what the two numbers mean? The three point four eight plus three point zero zero. What this means? The first line. Yes. This one. What plus means? What are the two numbers? Oh, oh it's the it's the average and the standard deviation. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, it's the average and the standard. Uh, and here is also another result of, uh, of the tracking distance ar arrows summary. Uh, but for here, we apply the common filter upon the two data source and uh, it generates the arrow, uh, still generates the arrow that lower than the uh, mixed reality prediction itself when going out of field of view. The LSTM tracking in field of view is, is pretty good. In the results you presented so far, there is no LSTM. There's just ultrasound and. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, here we are talking about the L LSTM tracking uh, performance. So it 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 works uh, pretty well. On the on the left side, you can see uh, the blue one is the uh, is the LSTM prediction result, and the pink one is the ground truth. So it it always follows the ground truth. And in the when it, the tracking status is high in the field of view, the LSTM is actually can generate a much higher uh, a higher accuracy than the mixed reality itself. So that we can we can it shows the potential that we can use this method to further correct the tracking performance uh, for the mixed reality. Uh, but when it's uh, when it's going out of field of view, um, we uh, we. Uh, because we train the LSTM, uh, we next we uh, we try to evaluate how how the how LSTM can work to predict the trajectory when it's going out of field of view. We uh, we did the experiment with different window size, and when the window size is low, it doesn't really learn a lot. Here, this is the point where the uh, where the controller going out. And uh, if you increase the window size up to like uh, 200 samples, then uh, initially, uh, at the very beginning, it, it learns the tra trajectory uh, pretty well. Then afterwards, um, because we're stacking more and more predicted results into the learning window, then uh, because of the accumulative error, it just went uh, go I mean, uh, not re uh, in reasonable at some point up to um, here we are up to 200 milliseconds. So, so within the when it's going to uh, going outside of view, in the in the next 200 milliseconds, we were able to predict this on uh, correct tracking. But after that, then the neural neural network just failed. Yeah. So the the way we train the model again, the way we train the model at the current stage is just the iterative training. Uh, mechanism. We're putting the prediction result back to the uh, previous window. So it looks like it did well in the short term. So it's, it's a short term and long term prediction difference between the two things, right? Yeah. So this does well in the short term, not in the long term. Not in the long term. So for long term, do you want to trust in the fusion model, do you want to trust the ultrasound more? Yeah. And correct again and then give it another. Uh, chance to do another short term, but then potentially, yeah. 
So I think that's one of the. That's why I think this is unfinished work. He's going to mm -hmm. talk about what are we doing next. Uh, yeah. So uh, the way we look at the results so far is um, the, the the first we we uh, we kind of realized that um, the prediction train is. Um, I mean, compared to the actual waveform here, uh, which cannot be clearly visualized here, but you can get some concept with the previous figure. Here, um, the predicted result is somehow very uh, low frequency. So that's why we think uh, we need to apply some detraining uh, methods to detrain the original data, moving the non-stationary uh, tendency in the data so that we can let the LSTM better learn the local high frequency uh, moving feature instead of the, instead of the low frequency one. Uh, and also we, uh, we can try the larger models to, uh, to increase the model's capability of learning the previous information to predict the uh, future one. Uh, and and there is also two promising ways we are rethinking that can be applied in the, in, in the next step. Uh, the first is the direct H step ahead forecasting and the MIMO model, apply the MIMO, MIMO model. Remember so far we are using a, a learning window size and always to predict the next one. And because of the iterative uh, prediction mechanism, uh, it, the prediction just going from uh, good to bad. Uh, so, but we can apply we, we can uh, apply this this model in a parallel way and generate a direct H step prediction uh, model, which means that uh, in the first parallel model we use it to predict the next n plus uh, t plus one, and we stack with uh, uh, the second model parallelly, uh, letting it to predict the t minus two, and just up to t minus n. So in this way, this, uh, this parallel uh, architecture, model architecture will be able to learn in the trajectory from t plus 1 to t plus n as the entire trunk. So that the, the, po, uh, the, the advantage of this model here compared to the one we use is it, there's no error ac uh, accumulation here. But, uh, but uh, but uh, the disadvantage is because of the parallel stacking, it has very high computation cost. And also we can try the MIMO, MIMO models, which means in the, in the training we just feed a trunk, uh, the, the, the training uh, data with the fixed window size and directly let it to predict the next one, next trunk. So compared to the previous one, this, uh, this one you only need to, um, predict the, uh, you need to only need to train one model instead of the parallel N models. And also it has no error accumulation. But, uh, but the disadvantage is that you, you have a fixed prediction lens which will not be very, uh, maybe not, uh, not very flexible uh, in the real practice. Maybe um, you want a long tracking window or a short tracking window, but this, uh, but this method can only give you a fixed one, so it's kind of lacks of flexibility here. Um, so, so the conclusion is, uh, so, so far we built a, an ultrasound ranging system which can give us the distance as, uh, accuracy of, of around eight centimeters, and we de develop an iterative time series prediction model based on the LSTM. Um, the prediction, uh, the, the good prediction can uh, go up to uh, 200 milliseconds. And uh, certainly we establish uh, the entire sensor fusion system to, to fuse the available data for the position uh, information. And again, uh, for last, I thank my uh, mentor, Shrap Zara, for all the help he provides during my interim, and also the entire audio and research group, and also um, Microsoft Research for giving me the opportunity to do research here. That's all. Good timing. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Okay, so thank you.